Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to walk you through the four basic ways the comma is used. Commas are an essential part of both the SAT and ACT. Therefore, knowing your comma rules is imperative to scoring well on both exams. Rule number one is the fanboys rule. Fanboys is an acronym for the most widely used conjunction words. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. These words have the ability to link two sentences together. When this happens, a comma must precede these fanboy's words. Let's look at this example. She can fill an audience with joy, or she can bring people to tears. In this case, both she can fill an audience with joy and she can bring people to tears can stand alone as a complete sentence. Therefore, there must be a comma before the conjunction word or. Be careful. Just because you see one of the fanboy's words in a sentence does not necessarily mean that that sentence requires a comma. This sentence, for example, could have been written as, she can fill an audience with joy or bring people to tears. Here, bring people to tears is not a complete sentence, and thus there is no comma before the word or. The comma is only used when the fanboy's words separate complete sentences. Rule number two. Use a comma after many introductory elements. Oftentimes, to create a more engaging and informative sentence, we dress up our sentence with clauses and phrases that we place before the noun and verb. These phrases may start with a preposition like near or in, or they can begin with words like though, when, while, and because. If you want to get technical, these words are called subordinate conjunctions. When you see sentences that start in such a way, Make sure to follow them with a comma in order to separate the phrase from the sentence. Here are two examples. In paintings by modern artists, colors are often very bright. In this sentence, in paintings by modern artists is an introductory phrase starting with the preposition in, and colors are often very bright is the sentence. Because Wendy woke up late, she had to postpone the fishing trip. Here, the introductory phrase begins with the subordinate conjunction because. She had to postpone the fishing trip is a sentence. Rule number three, use a comma before many concluding elements. This rule is very similar to rule number two. However, sometimes the phrase will come at the end of the sentence instead of at the beginning. You still need a comma to separate the phrase from the sentence. William borrowed grandpa's suit which was draped neatly on a hanger. In this example, William borrowed grandpa's suit is the sentence that precedes the phrase, which was draped neatly on a hanger. We could delete the words following the comma without changing the meaning of the sentence. Rule number four, commas separate items in a series. Commas are necessary whenever you create a list of phrases, nouns, infinitives, adverbs, or adjectives. This type of sentence is easy to recognize. For instance, he was a big strong man, contains a short list of two adjectives. Or, we bought potatoes, stuffing, and turkey for dinner, which lists out nouns. Rule number five, use commas to set off non-essential clauses and phrases. A non-essential clause or phrase adds information that is not necessary to the main idea in the sentence and therefore not essential to understanding the central purpose of the sentence. Similar to rule number two and three, this non-essential information is separated from the critical information by commas. We can see this through these examples. Tyler, who likes animals, wants to be a veterinarian. He pulled his apple pie, topped with a melting scoop of vanilla ice cream, towards him. Here, the words in between the commas could be removed completely without changing the meaning of the rest of the sentence. So that concludes Wilson Daily Prep's Guide to Commas. If you understand these rules, then your scores will go up. Remember to check out our channel for more helpful tips and how-to videos. Finally, be sure to go to www.wilsondailyprep.com for more online test prep, including daily SAT and ACT practice questions. Daily practice is the key to testing success.